Greetings, Professor Nalepa here with Dubspot.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some drum programming techniques I picked up from my friend Matt Shatek. Matt Shatek is a very talented producer, and he's a teacher at our physical school for Dubspot in New York City. And he also developed the logic curriculum for Dubspot.com's online school. Now, I had him as a guest remotely from his studio in Brooklyn, teaching my students in California, lawnmower man style. While he was teaching Logic and Ultrabeat, the techniques that he was talking about apply to any software or any drum machine, and he had lots of great advice for young producers, and I thought I'd share some of this stuff with you guys here today. So last time, we went through and built a synth from scratch. We used the simpler, loaded up with a sound, dialed it in a little bit, came up with a little melody part. Alright, so what we're going to do today is we're going to build a nice drum pattern to go with that. So there's a number of ways of approaching composition. Some producers like to start with drums. Others start with sound design and melody. Sometimes you start a song off by writing lyrics and then you put the music to those words. So there's no right or wrong way of doing things. And that's the key. You really got to find a way of, of creating that, that works best for you. So we're going to start here by taking an impulse and dragging it over to a blank area and it makes a new MIDI track with the impulse loaded up. Impulse has these eight cells that can be loaded up with sounds. And you see in the lower right corner, this little hot swap button, if you click that, it brings you to Live's built-in library where the kick drums are located. So Ableton, the Ableton crew has designated that this cell is going to be for kick drums. So I can go here and preview some drums find one that I like. So let's go with this 707 kick drum and we'll click here and you can see it brings us to the snares. Okay, so we'll pick a snare that we're feeling and basically you continue on through this uh, picking the sounds and making a kit and I'm gonna stick with the sounds of the 707 drum machine. I've been really getting into this album by this group The Weekend. It's called House of Balloons and it uses a lot of 707 drums. It's a free download right now on their site. We've got an 8.5 from Pitchfork. It's this ravey R&B, really good stuff. Been feeling that a lot lately. So, build a kit that you're happy with, and then to save time next time, uh, once you kind of create a sound palette that you want to work with for your drums, you can hit this little button here, and you can save it, and then you can name that kit, so that next time. All you have to do is drag that kit in there and it's already loaded up. So this is a great way to save time for yourself. If you dial in and you make a nice synth sound, save that preset so you don't have to go and do all that work. Uh, you can also go and save chains of effects, uh, chains of MIDI effects, instrument racks. You know, I highly recommend that. If you find that you're using some technique a lot, save yourself the time and, and be efficient in the studio. And that was a great point that Shade Tech brought up when he was talking to my students was it's really important to get an idea down when you get inspired get that idea down quickly so learning your tools and being fluid uh, is a great way to help you out as a producer because a lot of times you get that inspiration and if you spend too much time fiddling around with the detail you can get a little hung up on it and then you get exhausted and then you just kinda give up on the idea and that's not what we want to do here so we've got an impulse, let's double click on a blank cell and it makes a blank one bar MIDI clip. So what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll program a little drum beat in here. We can either record it in or we can draw it in or we can double click on the cells. I'm going to just use the pencil tool and um, I'm going to just draw something in. Uh, so i got a kicks and snare and we'll just play this here. Okay, and you can see this is really peeking out, so we look, we pull this little guy up and we see that it's going over by about five and change. So I'm just gonna bring the volume down for the whole drum part about 10 dBs just to be safe. Okay. Okay, and then maybe we'll add some hats now. All right, so there's a technique that I picked up from uh, Pat Kupo over the past week. Uh, he's a fellow Dubspot instructor, and he was talking about linear drum programming. 
And linear drum programming would mean as you move from left to right, you can only have one drum sound. So anywhere you have another drum going, you can delete the drums so that you hear those drums clearly. So let's hear what that sounds like. Alright, so now we've got a little pattern going that we like. So this is the trick that Shade Tech was talking about. Build up a pattern, so if, whether it's a one bar loop or a two bar loop, then go and double the size of that loop, and then select um, all of the, the notes that you've got going here. So we're just going to click here, select them all, hold down the Option key, and drag them to the, le to the right here. And now we've basically duplicated that part, and we've got a two bar loop going. So what you do with this two bar loop is add some variation between the first bar and the second bar. So now maybe we'll get rid of that kick drum there and we'll put back the hat. Okay. Here we have a slight variation going there, but let's add a little bit more. We'll, we'll click on this little white bar here. It selects all of the hats there and I'm going to enable my pencil tool. Command B is the shortcut for the pencil tool and I'm gonna just go here and draw in a little variety on the velocity for these for these parts. So Shade Tech's big trick which is something that I've also heard expounded by my good old friend Evan Blue Tech is every four or eight bars have some variety. Two, four, eight bars. Basically by going through and building this one bar and then two bar and then making uh, some variation. All right, we've got this part. Now if we double the size of this loop and then we do that same process over again. So I'm going to turn off the pencil tool, select all of these, grab and drag it over here. Now we have four bars and then we add some variation between these first two bars and the second two bars. So what we're doing is we're creating a longer loop that doesn't just repeat over and over and over and over again. And that is that is when people start checking out. They hear your music, it sounds a little too loopy. So this is a nice way when you're building a drum part from scratch to actually go through and add some variety. So maybe now in the second part here, uh, we'll add, you know, we'll add a rim shot here and there. So um, let's see how that, that goes. And I'll, I'll stick with the linear drumming. Okay, so now we've got that going and we'll do the same thing again. So we're now we're going to make an 8 bar loop. We grab by and select all, hold down option, drag this guy over. And then we add some more variety here. So this is the big turnaround. Every 8 bars, this is where you really need to make sure at the end of these 8 bars that you have uh, a nice fill going here. So maybe we'll do a little drum roll type situation and uh, we'll stick to this linear drumming concept and um, I'm gonna go back here to the pencil and maybe we'll have the drums kind of building in intensity and uh, if, we, if we were to listen to that all right so now we've got a nice little fill every eight bars and we've got an eight bar pattern that has a lot of variation uh, from from bar to bar because when you listen to music this was a big breakthrough for myself is when I actually started going in and programming my own drum patterns as opposed to just using straight loops because when you use audio loops you're using an idea and it just people start to check out if they hear the same thing over and over again so adding a little bit of subtle detail in these subtle changes can be really helpful other things you can do, uh, we can make, uh, you know, well, let's just drag in that kit we made. So for this part here, we can do some interesting stuff where um, I'm going to copy this this pattern here, and maybe what we'll do is we'll get rid of everything but the kicks, 
on this. And we're going to turn the volume off on this track. We're actually going to turn this track off completely. So on this impulse drum here, this is just going to be, I'm going to rename it to be the ghost track. So this is a trick that I've been liking to do. And we're going to use this ghost track to sidechain the synth to just the kicks. Okay. So there's a number of different ways to, to accomplish this. I could also um, you know, do it by pulling the kick out from this one impulse drum machine into a new audio track, or I can just make a, a pattern that only has kick drums on it. All right? So now we're not actually hearing that kick, but if we go here and drop a uh, audio effect on there, we'll just drag a compressor, and we're going to open up the side chain section and we'll choose ghost as our input and we're going to really extremely side chain it to that kick and if I solo this okay so basically what's happening is that ducking to get out of the way of the kick. We could also try side chaining it to the actual whole drum part. But then it's basically kind of quiet the whole time. So I'll oftentimes will make uh, a ghost drum part where I'm just using that to side chain things to. So we're not actually hearing this in the mix. Uh, we're just using it as the source. You can also go and create a pattern that's different than the actual drum pattern that's in the song. So here, maybe I'll draw in a four on the floor kick pattern. And now that synth is ducking to each of those four hits, adding a nice counter rhythm to the drums that are going in there now. So I asked Matt Shatek uh, to give some parting advice to the young producers in my class, and I thought he really nailed it. He, he told them, you know, when you're getting started, it is really helpful to try to copy the sound of your heroes, to make a track that sounds like your favorite band. And you know, it's how you learn. But at some point, you really want to focus on making your own unique sound. And, and that's a theme that's been coming up again and again uh, with every artist that I've been speaking with. And the thing is, if you're making a sound like someone else who's already established and they've made a name for themselves with that sound, you're going to be in a lane behind that artist. They're going to say, oh, well, it sounds like such and such. But if you really dive deep and come up with your own sound and push it and find a way to pull together a number of different elements and, and do something unique with it, you're going to end up standing out from the rest of the pack. So I encourage you guys to do that. Best way to do that is to just experiment, try different things, go through and explore uh, all the different ways of, of creating, and then identify a couple of these key elements that will be your sound palette, that will be your arsenal of tools that you use when you create a body of work. If you use the same sort of sounds in a, in a body of work, then you have your sound palette. It's a nice cohesive body of work. The bottom line really is to just have fun with this. So, you know, let us know how it's going. If you've come up with some uh, nice tracks that you're making after watching any of these tutorials, feel free to, to let us know about it and uh, we'll, we'll check them out. But we'll be back with more tutorials. We're going to shift it up a little bit going to start doing some artist interviews in here as well as the tutorial section so uh, stay tuned to dubspot.com again I'm Professor Nalepa thanks for tuning in we'll see you soon welcome to dubspot we believe in providing you hands-on experience right away whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ or do both, you've come to the right place. 
come explore Dove Spot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.